Roman Catholic Church recently beatified John Paul II, their recently deceased pope, which means he has one more step to sainthood. According to Catholic teaching, the Church has the power to make, or at least mark, when God allows famous dead Catholics into heaven. Apparently, it doesn't happen very often, so it's a big deal. In fact, according to the Church, in all of humanity, there are only a few thousand saints, all Roman Catholic, of course. There are so few saints that, according to this cute Catholic song I found on YouTube, you can actually name many of them. There's Mary, Joseph, John the Baptist, James the son of Zebedee, and Peter, Andrew, Matthew, Philip, Thomas, John, Bartholomew, and Simon, Zealot, Thaddeus, and James the son of Alphaeus. And... But is this true? Notice that some of the greatest believers in the Bible, Father Abraham and Moses, the man of God, are strangely missing from the Catholic list of saints, as are other famous believers from the Old Testament, like King David, a man after God's own heart. Who does God say his saints are? Inquiring minds want to know. I want to know. Now, I was brought up in a Catholic background. We had colorful icons in our church building, ostensibly showing saints from the early days. But then I finally read the Bible for myself to see if what I was told was true. While the word saint is used in the Old Testament, it wasn't until I read the New Testament that I noticed major inconsistencies between Catholic doctrine and what God said in the Bible. For example, immediately after Jesus died on the cross and the huge, thick curtain in the Jewish temple that separated the Holy of Holies was miraculously torn open during an earthquake, Matthew reports in his Gospel that graves were open and many bodies of the saints which slept arose. But how could there be saints before Pentecost, before the church was on the scene to canonize them? Further, these would have to be Old Testament believers since Jesus hadn't been resurrected yet. But the church list starts with New Testament believers only. Even after the resurrection, in the book of Acts, when the murderous Saul became the Apostle Paul and was sent to Ananias, Ananias said to Jesus, Lord, I have heard many reports about this man and all the harm he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. Again, how could there be saints in Jerusalem so soon? The church had barely started. There's nothing in the Bible about the church making these martyrs saints. Besides, according to the Catholic Church, it takes four steps to become a saint, and there's a five-year cooling-off period after you die before the church can think about making you a saint. Similarly, when the Apostle Paul recounted the story of his salvation, he said, On the authority of the chief priests, I put many of the saints in prison. This shows there were people who were saints while still alive, which contradicts Catholic doctrine, which says you have to have died first to become a saint. Finally, and what opened my eyes about the Catholic Church's misappropriation of the term saint, was when I read the Apostle Paul's letters to the various churches. He addresses his letters to the saints in such and such a place. It's clear that Paul is writing to a multitude of Christians in the various churches who were quite alive and who were already saints in the eyes of God. No need for man's church to give the say-so, and no need to be famous in the Catholic Church for God to call you a saint. So, who are the true saints? Are there only a famous few, or are there a multitude of the masses? Can you be a saint today, knowing you're going directly to heaven after you die? Or do you have to wait a bunch of years after you die to even have a chance of being a saint, as the Catholic Church teaches? Read the Bible for yourself. God reports, you decide. These are the only saints for lack of breath that I could mention. But there's many thousand more that are deserving your attention. 